Broadcasting live from the fortified village on the plain of Innistrad, this is Tap Tap Concede. Welcome everybody to Tap Tap Concede. My name is Graham and joining me is Nelson. Hi, yes, it's great to be here. And Cameron. Huh? <laughs> and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the Midnight Hunt Commander cards because frankly none of us have really seen them yet. I say fortified village from the plain of Innistrad because I actually don't know where fortified village was printed originally. Innistrad. Oh, it was. I think so. Yeah, I think it's isn't it from Shadows over Innistrad? Isn't that that one? You're totally right. Like checks if you have a thing in your hand and then it comes in play untapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't have new art. It's just always been an Innistrad. Well, look at me. I accidentally nailed it. If you want to get a hand, a hand, a handle. If you want to get a hold, if you would like to put these in your hands, there we go. Saved it. Perfect. Leave all of that in. Please go to cardkingdom.com. They're our sponsor. Cardkingdom.com slash LRR. Let them know we sent you. Ask for a button. The button currently, unless something has changed, currently says, hello, my name is Medium Gargadon. And you can have one or both of these decks and all the Midnight Hunt that you could want at a reasonable price, and it will arrive there very quickly because they're very quick people. And of course, this show and everything we do is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. So we realized this morning while discussing what the heck we're going to talk about on the podcast today, I say we realized, James realized, that we, we all got so caught up in prepping for the PPR and then playing with the set that we hadn't looked at these two new commander decks that they've released so this is going to be sort of our first time really seeing a bunch of these cards we're going to take a look at a handful anyway of the brand new cards that are exclusive to these commander decks the two decks by the way are coven counters which is a selesnia well i mean i guess coven deck i'm assuming and there is also a deck called undead unleashed which is a demir colored well you know graveyard zombies stuff deck so honestly both of these sound super fun yeah i guess we shall begin with the commanders so let's take a look at the sort of the 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 face commander the default one each of these decks it looks like they come with typically what they've they've done is they have these decks coming with additional options for for the commander but the, 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 there's also one like printed on the box. So that's the one we're going to look at first. For the Coven Counters deck, we have Lenore, Autumn Sovereign. So she's two green white for a zero four human noble. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature you control. Then if you control three or more creatures with different powers, draw a card. So the counter happens every combat regardless if you have coven you get to draw a card also she's an 04 so that just sort of already helps cuz you're unlikely to have other creatures with zero power pretty cool i that doesn't seem like a totally backbreaking ability by itself yeah like i feel like this could could be an uncommon in the set yeah or, or at least a rare yeah but yeah, that's fine it it's okay yeah. if cards aren't super overpowered yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I honestly like that. I, I can't remember the card name, but the one from a couple of years ago that was the Saltai Naga that uh, you you got to morph something for free every turn, and then every time you turned a morph face up, you drew a card or something. I read that. I was like, that's absolutely effing busted. And and it was. And Lenore just seems good, like a cool build-around commander. I, I dig that. Yeah. Also, wasn't Lenore how Coven was spoiled? Oh, Maybe. I think she might have been the first card we saw with Coven. She is a cool witch. Yeah. Also, is Lenore who we see getting completely owned on Olivia's Midnight Ambush? Oh, it might be. More interesting questions. Certainly someone wearing that kind of headdress. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like, ha have we seen Lenore's arrival and then subsequent getting aced by a an ages-old vampire? Who can say? Mm-hmm. The other new card in these colors, the other sort of legendary option for a commander in the in the deck is Kyler. <laughs> does, he, does he look like a Kyler? It kind of looks like a Kyler. I don't know. Sigardian Emissary. Sorry, that's a very like SoCal name. Kyler, your boss is on the phone. He says you're supposed to wash dishes this morning. <laughs> you're scheduled. You're on the schedule, Kyler. You put the surfboard down. 
Did you take one of my shoes when you left? Did you leave one of your shoes here and take one of my shoes? <laughs> so, Kyler, more of my edibles are missing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you've seen them. <laughs> Kyler's definitely seen them. All right, what's the card actually do? <laughs> Three white green for a 2-2 human cleric. Whenever another human... Ooh, humans. Whenever another human enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on kyler and holy crap other humans you control get plus one plus one for each counter on kyler yeah this is the sort of busted crap that we're used to from commander decks yeah yeah i would follow kyler into battle yeah dang yeah this is a make yourself a selesnia humans deck this seems very cool neat all right the deck has a bunch of cool reprints which is also nice but again we're going to focus sort of on the on the on the new cards do we want to keep looking through this deck and then swap to the other one or do we want to I, I like that plan i think that's fine let's look at all the white green cards first all right cool so we've got a sort of a kind of a wrath of celestial judgment which i mean it just seems like just another way of saying wrath of god but fair enough it's uh four white white for a sorcery for each different power among creatures on the battlefield choose a creature with that power and destroy each creature not chosen this way. So that is a very cool sort of, I mean, it's it's basically like it supports the coven theme because you want to have different powers among your creatures. So you're like, I'm going to choose my creature with one power and my creature with two power and my creature with three power and, you know, going up the line. And then you're like, and all the other ones get destroyed. Was that all of your creatures? Whoopsies. So plays a bit better in the Lenore deck probably right because you can use your uh coven triggers to try to set up a creature of each different power mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it will it will leave everything but or will destroy everything but your coven yeah exactly very thematic now in commander the chance of someone having like a nine power creature that you can't destroy with this seems much more likely yep that's a fair point <laughs> but but i don't know that seems that seems pretty cool this definitely seems especially with like a four player table this seems like you could really do some damage it's weird how the gods of innistrad blew up so many human tokens but didn't take down ulamog's path razor <laughs> <laughs> hey 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 you know it's union rules all right card says not gonna touch it sorry boss actually speaking of those human tokens Check out this curse. This doesn't seem like a bad curse. Uh, this is Curse of Conformity. It's an enchantment, enchant player. Non-legendary creatures enchanted player controls have base power and toughness 3-3 three, three, and lose all creature types. So yes, that is bad for... If you curse yourself, that's obviously bad for like some of your you know utility creatures. But if you're in a deck that's making just acres of human tokens, they're all mm -hmm. particularly mad today. Yeah, like, and they're all uniformly mad today, right? Like, I enjoy this. I enjoy this. It can anthem your team or or debilitate your opponents. Mm -hmm. If it, if only they lost their abilities too, then they could be then it could be all as elk. But since you, they still get their abilities, you know, it's not quite as as backbreaking as Oko. <laughs> most most things aren't as backbreaking as Oko. Moorland Rescuer is five and a white for a 4-4 four, four human knight. When it dies, return any number of other creature cards with total power X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, where X is Moorland Rescuer's power, and then you exile Moorland Rescuer. So you're going to get at least four. If you've managed to increase Moorland Rescuer's power, you might get you might get more than that. And it's it's not one creature. It's any number of creatures. They just Their, their total power has to add up to whatever... The rescuer's power was and they go right back into play that's you could you could loop some stuff with that obviously not the moreland rescuer because it exiles itself but i mean you could you know it's like oh moreland rescuer died well i bring back my karmic guide or the what's the what's the what's the new one sorry there's a new angel that brings back two creatures Ooh, i forget but yeah i was gonna say along the same lines like if you could just mill yourself a whole bunch and then reanimate this you probably can get into like the typical protean hulk win because it's counting power or not cmc mm -hmm. yeah up to four right. power so yeah maybe i don't know yeah maybe not maybe that's still too much between like your your sacrifice outlets and your your creature that reanimates something but maybe yeah oh here we go it's i just found it sigardian savior james found it as well awesome thank you it's three white white for a three three it's a mythic angel in the main set flying when it enters the battlefield oh if you cast it ah oh, they got me 
it says if you cast it return up to two target creature cards with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield all right i have to cast it yeah we found out why that card's not just strictly better actually wait i changed my mind you could put this in a like a canadian hound or pure protein hulk deck because if you just mill yourself and then you get this back you can grab the protection of the black angel that uh, or the angel spirit that gets back a creature as well as a one one for one sacrifice outlet and maybe like the protection elf from the like pro tour invites that sacrifices a forest gives something shroud and then you can with the trigger you can bring back protean hulk and then you can sacrifice the protean hulk and then oh i guess you have to have the right things in your library though okay go back i'm back to never mind i don't think it's making the cut jordan can you cut all that out and let everyone think that i know what i'm talking about Ooh, ooh, could you do that for me too, Jordan? <laughs> Short podcast this week. Next, we have Sigarda's Vanguard. It's a four and a white for a 3-3 three, three flash flying angel. Whenever Sigarda's Vanguard enters the battlefield or attacks, choose any number of creatures with different powers. Those creatures gain double strike until end of turn. Whoa. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, that'll kill you good. You can flash this in after blocks, right? Oh my God, you can. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. And then you probably get one more swing with her. A 3-3 three, three flyer, I'm not uh, rating to live long in combat. <laughs> no. But maybe long enough. Yeah, flashing it in after blocks is uh, GG. Any number of creatures with different powers. You could really do some damage with that. All right. This white-green deck out of the box already seems better than most of my commander decks. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, it's it, it's pretty spicy. Stalwart Pathlighter is next. Two and a white for a 3-1 human soldier with vigilance and coven at the beginning of combat on your turn if you control three or more creatures with different powers. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Oh. <laughs> at least it doesn't have flash. Yeah. Huh. Well, we found the combo, everyone. We got there. Wall of Mourning is the last white card. It's a one and a white for a zero four wall with Defender. Looks like a picture of, I guess that's Avison in relief on the wall. It, it probably would be. She's surrounded by the symbol of her church. When Wall of Mourning enters the battlefield, exile a card from the top of your library face down for each opponent you have. Okay. Coven. At the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more creatures with different powers, put a card exiled with Wall of Mourning into its owner's hand. But you don't know which one they're going to be. Interesting. So, quick question. Go ahead. I was just wondering, like, in the aftermath of Eldritch Moon and uh, Shadows over Innistrad, are the humans of Innistrad just like, Avacyn? Never heard of her. Absolutely no idea who you're talking about. Dead to me. Or are they like, oh no, yeah, I remember her, she was alright. Until the... You know, until the thing and everyone's like, well, yeah, obviously excluding the thing. I think in magic lore, typically when there's going to be revisionist history, they've kind of clued us into it through mm. some of the lore of the cards. So I suspect that, you know, some priests have survived like or like some elders in the community and some books, you know, some records have survived of like the years of worshiping Avison. So, I mean, I, I just wonder if like there's a branch of her church still extant. That is like, mm. no, one day Avison is going to come back and she's going to kill us all. Oh. Mm. She's going to finish killing us all, right? Like this weird apocalyptic Avisonite church. Well, now you've said it, it's it's free for them to do it. <laughs> yep. I mean, a lot of this set has to do with kind of spiritual desolation in the aftermath of the church turning out to have been a lie. Right. Which we also have seen kind of played out on Zendikar before, too. Mm. So mm -hmm. that's maybe a favorite theme. <laughs> at Watsi lore. I like this card. It's a pretty cool blink target. You need to activate Coven, but then in a commander game, it's kind of like a triple wall of omens, right? Like, yeah, if you have Coven, Ooh. this draws you three cards, assuming it doesn't die for three turns. Right? I was thinking of that same comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah, the stat lines and casting costs are the same. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it looks like it's a solid card. I realize before we move out of white here that technically so it's not in the deck but there's technically some other so this this i actually think is silly this bugs me there's commander specific cards that aren't in the decks and are only available in set boosters oh that's not just it's not just treatments that are only available in set boosters, it's actual cards too yeah okay that's a little dirty yeah <laughs> yeah i don't i don't love it so one of them speaking of which is avison's memorial which is five white 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 for a indestructible legendary artifact and other legendary permanents you control have indestructible. It said, oh, here you go. The flavor text. They had no marble, so the faithful repaired her likeness with wood, straw, twine, and clay. All right. Yeah, some people out there keeping it real for Avison. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. The other white one, it, the, the card is fine. This Avacyn's Memorial? I don't, yeah, I'm not super impressed. I don't know. Yeah. I guess if you're playing Captain Cisse, like, it might be worth a slot. It just seems so expensive. Maybe it yeah. combos with some things. Like, you know, giving permanence indestructible is powerful for sure. But this is a lot of mana for not a big effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other one is Visions of Glory. There's this cycle of visions, sorcery visions. So it's four and a white for a uh, sorcery. Create a one one white human creature token for each creature you control. So you sort of just amplify your creatures. It also has flashback for eight white white this spell costs x less to cast this way where x is the greatest mana value of a commander you own on the battlefield or in the command zone hmm. cool so if you were running this if you swapped this into this coven deck then that would be only four white white because lenore is cmc or mana value four huh but if like avison archangel or whatever is your like the eight mana avison is your commander yeah, you then it's only class it for two, right? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. I was just thinking, like, I guess Reese the Redeem doesn't run this, and then part of my brain is like, yes, Cameron, that is that is the reason Reese the Redeem doesn't want to run this card. Very good. Very good. <laughs> We're all gonna stand around in a circle and clap for you now that you've had that little realization. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the cards that are actually in the deck. We've got Celebrate the Harvest. It's three and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to X basic land cards, where X is the number of different powers among creatures you control. Put those cards onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. First of all, I love the art here. Everyone's doing a happy mask dance. This is like the nice harvest tide. It looks fun. Yeah, we, we get to actually see the harvest tide festival happening and people are enjoying themselves. It's like yeah. before it gets ruined or whatever. Before the werewolves attacked. Yeah. And this card seems okay. I don't know if it's going to have a ton of use outside of this deck, but. Yeah, there's definitely some of these cards that really care about the coven thing which is cool it's neat to have that sort of interesting support and it's a cool design space but yeah i definitely don't think that this card's gonna you know be a barnstormer outside of a deck that really cares about having creatures with different powers yeah like that there's already a bunch of cards you can play there four mana go get two lands and some of them have various other benefits so i don't know if you're maxing out on those maybe this gets into that kind of deck but otherwise probably just for the coven deck i agree curse of clinging webs is terrifying oh lord it's two and a green for a curse a enchant player whenever a non-token creature enchanted player controls dies exile it and you create a one two green spider token with reach it's because they were full of spiders yeah the whole time claire realized too late why no one ever took the shortcut through the abandoned mill claire just you know, one of those people who doesn't listen. Yeah, that seems that seems fun. Well, no, the abandoned mill isn't exactly what's full of spiders. You're full of spiders. You'll find that out if you go through the abandoned mill. Mm-hmm. Claire's last words is just that, like, rapid exhalation through the nose. Like the sound uh, of, like, trying to blow something out of your nose. <laughs> oh, good. Cam, I was already disturbed, buddy. I didn't need your help. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm mainly here to create rich tapestries of narrative. That's my <laughs> one function. Rich tapestries of spider silk in my mind. Uh, this card's pretty sweet because it sets up well with wraths, right? Like it's like you you you've already rebuilt fast because you didn't have to spend any mana on the turn that you wrath of God. So that's it's a kind of a sweet card, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Heron Blade Elite is two and a green for a one one human warrior with vigilance whenever another human enters the battlefield under your control put a plus one plus one counter on heron blade elite this is awesome we've got more champions of the parish and tap to add x mana of any one color where x is heron blade elite's power wow that seems sweet yeah this is a good card right here yeah i have a lore question and I don't know if anyone knows the answer to it. This is the this is not the first time I've seen this, I guess, crook with the heron's head on it. it the card's called Heron Blade Elite. That the heron's head is not is not a blade. You could probably do a real damage to someone with it, but it's not a blade. You know, she's a holding a sword. That's the blade. Mm. But also, maybe the heron blades are a thing. What do, does anyone know anything about this? <laughs> I think the heron is Sigarda's symbol. 
no? Yeah, the heron is, um, well, I mean, like, it was also symbolic of the church, right? There was the heron shadow on the moon. Right, yeah, yeah. But I think the heron is very specific to Sigarda. Also, like, the hippogriffs on Innistrad have a heron head, right? And those are also, like, I mean, we have literal angels, so I don't want to say, like, you know, they're the messengers of the gods, but they do have that relationship to the, the church. Mm-hmm. Also, I just like Heron Blade Elite, the name, because it reminds me of Myth the Fallen Lords. Oh, yeah. Which had a unit called the Heron Guard, who were like, you know, stone badasses. They were a really good unit. You wanted as many of those as you could get. Nice. How do you feel about Kerbis? <laughs> find out what the heck Kerbis is. Kerbis Harvest Celebrant is X green green for a legendary tree folk. Hello. It's a zero zero. Kerbis enters the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the amount of mana spent to cast it. Okay, so if X is zero, it's still just a two two for two. So that's nice. That's a that's good scaling. Also, the commander tax like pumps it up, right? Oh, yeah. Remove a plus one plus one counter from Kerbis. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn to another target creature with a plus one plus one counter on it. So can't protect itself but can protect another creature if you got a counter on it. And there is a sub-theme already in this set, in this deck of plus and plus one counters, but also you could just put this into any commander deck that has a plus and plus one counters theme. That seems neat. Yeah. No, I think Kerbis seems totally decent and probably something you're going to forget about, right? You're going to bolt something important and your opponent is just going to remove a counter from Kerbis and you'll, you'll be like, right, onboard tricks. The Kerbis of it all. I can absolutely see Ren at a party like, you know, leaning against a door frame, chatting up Kerbis. <laughs> right. And somebody's like, somebody should tell Kerbis. <laughs> somebody's got to tell, got to tell Kerbis. Somebody's got to tell Kerbis. Kerbis is doing the thing where like Kerbis has a little bit of a blush and then tucks hair behind its ear or their, their ear. Yep. Shut it down. I think the name, it's impossible not to look at the name Kerbis Harvest Celebrant, especially like the first letter H and not just see the word hubris. But I don't entirely know how the car design connects to hubris or what the what the story is there. But yeah, I would agree. I can't help but think about this every time you see a legendary creature, especially in the context of commander decks. I don't feel like I'm immediately inspired to use this as a, a general, but seems like a cool card to put in the 99 of your tree folk deck or of your like your gave guru of sports deck or something like that. Mm. Ray, Ray Han, Last of the Abzan or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Ruinous Intrusion is next three and a green for an instant exile target artifact or enchantment nice put x plus one plus one counters on target creature you control where x is the mana value of the permanent exiled this way sometimes you do need not sometimes you often generally always need artifact or enchantment removal in commander it comes up a lot i don't know if like targeted one for one removal is really the kind of game you want to be playing in that regard necessarily but you do get counters out of it, and that's probably all right. I don't know. Four mana, though. Just give me my naturalize. Yeah. Not down to pay four mana. <laughs> yeah. They make naturalize so good now, it can exile a card from the graveyard instead. Oh, right. Return to nature. Yeah. Don't you just want to be playing Knight of Autumn or Rex Sage in lieu of this? Yeah, they're all better than this one, Cameron. Yep. Sigardian Zealot is next four and a green for a three three human cleric at the beginning of combat on your turn choose any number of creatures with different powers each of them woof gets plus x plus x and vigilance until end of turn where x is sigardian zealot's power wow i like cards like this because you can absolutely see a scenario you can play it out in your mind where it's like no i'll cast sigardian zealot and then in response to its trigger giant growth Mm -hmm. right they did I believe, change the rules so you can't do the Huntmaster trick anymore. Why not? I was just going to talk about that too from Ravnica, right? Yeah, in Ravnica where you give your opponent's Huntmaster minus X minus X. Oh, it, that rule. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it wipes their board. Yeah, I think maybe it's like supposed to count as zero now or something. Yeah, I think it doesn't go below. It can't go below below it it can't do that i don't recall the specifics i just know that it, you felt very clever at the time when you got to do it and wipe your opponent's whole board but you can't do that now because they were like that's actually not what we wanted <laughs> yeah it's not that kind of hunt yeah. i do love the flavor of that mm-hmm. right <laughs> like hunt master shows up and just gets absolutely annihilated like just like demolished by something and everyone on your team is like mm, we're out 
Sorry, boss. <laughs> Look at that. It's time for my 15. Yeah. <laughs> Last green card we have in the main deck is Somberwald Beastmaster. Six in the green for a 1-1. One, one. Seven mana 1-1. One, one. I can't wait to read the rest of this card. When it, It's a human ranger. When it enters the battlefield, you create a 2-2 two, two wolf, a 3-3 three, three beast, and a 4-4 four, four beast. And creatures you control have death touch. Cool. Yeah, coven in a can. Yeah, wasn't this like in Dragon's Maze? Like it was some version of Tristani or something? There was an uncommon, certainly. Or like Tr Tristani's attendant or something? Tristani's summoner? Yeah. Yeah, it came with like a bird. Yeah, instead of all having death touch, they have different abilities. But it's still seven mana for a 1-1 one, one that makes a 2-2, two, two, a 3-3, three, three, and a 4-4. Four, four. But these ones have death touch. James points out, I should say out loud, it's creature tokens you control have death touch. Not all your creatures. But you did just get three creature tokens off this card, so. Right. Yeah. No, I mean. You dig it. Solid, solid card. Mm -hmm. The green vision from the set boosters is visions of dominance. It's terrific art, by the way. It's like a tiny frog on a lily pad looking at its reflection. And its reflection is like, I think it's the Gitrog monster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> someday little buddy two and a green for a sorcery put a plus one plus one counter on target creature then double the number of plus one plus one counters on it and then flash back again for eight green green with the same clause that it's x cheaper where x is the greatest mana value of a commander you own in the battlefield or in the command zone sure yeah that's a pretty fair card no all right let's take a look at the second commander deck here undead unleashed with its commander Wilhelt the Rot Cleaver. Wilhelt's cleaver seems to be glowing with blue flame, which is probably bad for anyone trying to fight Wilhelt. I don't know exactly why, but well, let's find out. Well, I mean, like, that, that's just a natural gas flame, Graham. Nothing to worry about there. That's just clean, burning energy of the future. It does look like that, doesn't it? Wilhelt, the Fortis BC salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Wilhelt is two blue black for a 3-3 three, three zombie warrior, legendary zombie warrior, uh, doing pretty well for a zombie, I guess. Whenever another zombie you control dies, if it didn't have decayed, create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token with decayed. And at the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a zombie if you do draw a card. What I think is most interesting about Wilhelt's first ability is it doesn't say non-token. So you can put this in a commander deck. Maybe this one does. I haven't seen the deck list yet. That makes the old school or the regular rather zombie tokens that don't have decayed. So if you just have any zombie die, even if it's a token, then you get another one that has decayed. That seems very powerful. Quite. Yeah, like not infinite, but maybe very large when you're, you know, sacrificing your zombies to various effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Best friends forever with Grave Titan. Yeah. The other legendary in the deck is Eloise Nephalia Sleuth. It's three blue black for a 4-4 four, four human rogue. Whenever another creature you control dies, investigate. And whenever you sacrifice a token, surveil one. So when you crack your investigate token, when you crack your clue tokens, rather, or if you're sacrificing like a zombie token to Wilhelm's ability, you also get to surveil. Very cool. I love the idea of Eloise in like... A Tim Hortons sacrificing food tokens and just getting work done. <laughs> I like the idea that she's that these two are rivals, that she's trying to track Wilhelt. I feel like Wilhelt's whereabouts should be pretty clear by the massive horde <laughs> of zombies all around him. It's a mystery. It's a mystery, detective. We need to hire Eloise, the great nefarious Luth, to find out where Wilhelt and the 10,000 zombies of Innistrad have been. Yeah. I think that would be a fun Demir deck all by itself, just with Eloise in charge. That sounds super fun. I don't think Eloise is as broken as Kyler, but very cool. Elsewhere in that deck, here's some blue cards. Cleaver Scob. Three. There's no Scobs in the main set, are there? Yeah, there's a few. I just don't think they're referred to as Scobs on the card in the you know in, the, in their name. No, there's at least one. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Maybe there'll be more in Crimson Vow. In this case, Cleaver Scob is three and a blue for a two four zombie horror, and for three and tap and sacrifice another zombie, create two tokens that are copies of the sacrificed creature. Fun. Okay. So you, you, you know what's neat is 
I mean, obviously you have better targets for this, but you do have an opportunity to respond to the decayed trigger at the end of combat. So you could attack with a decayed zombie, have it deal damage, and then sacrifice it and create two decayed zombie tokens. I just kind of want to run this with Malfeld twins. I mean, that makes that sounds more fun. <laughs> just keep keep duplicating Malfeld twins. And they, they're just full of tinier men. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I also love how this is non-symmetrical. There's one side that's like really beefy. Mm. And then the other side is not. I wonder if this guy just like walks in circles all the time. <laughs> a lot of the, the stitch together on uh, on Innistrad are like that. Or they even don't even have like two human hands or whatever. They've got like one lobster claw. Mm -hmm. Getting back to it. Sorry, there is a Scob Wrangler, but that's a human, but refers to Scobs. And there's also the the new zombie lord in the main set, the Blade Stitch Scob. Two mana, two, three zombie that gives other zombies plus one plus zero. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, that's a scob. Cool. Next in the commander deck, we have Curse of Unbinding. Seven mana for a curse. Boy, okay. Six and a blue. Enchant player. At the beginning of Enchanted Player's Upkeep, that player reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield under your control. The player puts the rest of the revealed cards into their graveyard. Okay, I suppose that is a effect that is worth seven mana. You just get to treachery every turn. And it fills their yard, too, so it's like going to eventually mill them out, maybe. Note for listeners, yes, Graham knows that treachery, you get to pick which creature. I'm simplifying. We're implementing a shortcut. Yeah, exactly, which you know I've ruined by explaining. But anyway, let's continue. <laughs> Comments are already under us in YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, both, both these blue cards from this deck seem pretty fun so far. Mm -hmm. Drown in Dreams is X, 2, and a blue for an instant. Choose one. If you control a commander as you cast the spell... You may choose both. Target player draws X cards or target player mills twice X cards. Neat. Okay, so a bit of a, a aggressive mill strategy, like a f offensive mill, probably cards that want to mill your opponent we're seeing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if in this deck specifically, if you want to target yourself with both modes. Well, I mean, often milling yourself is really good in, in uh, constructed, right? Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, but when you see the opportunity to mill for like, like more than five at a time or something, then that's when you clue in like, oh, this is going to get used to win the game on a on a target them mm -hmm. mill card. And, you know, in, in Commander Drown in Dreams might mill someone for 30, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of powerful X spells, empty the laboratory, uh, empty the laboratory. Right, the UK pronunciation is this is empty the what was the not empty the Warrens the the black one empty the C catacombs empty the catacombs thank you no problem so this is X this is easier to cast X blue blue for a sorcery sacrifice X zombies then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a number of zombie creature cards equal to the number of zombies sacrificed this way put those cards onto the battlefield and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order holy moly zombie tinker yeah or zombie mass polymorph or whatever right uh, that's that's kind of amazing i think yeah don't get board wiped after you cast this because you don't have anything left <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that's very cool yeah fun card for sure absolutely yeah you could even zombie tinker into horde wing scob which is four and blue for a three three zombie horror with flying other zombies you control have flying that's that's horrifying to think of whenever one or more there's more whenever one or more zombies you control deal combat damage to one or more of your opponents you may draw cards equal to the number of opponents dealt damage this way if you do discard that many cards sign me up other zombies you control have flying yeah what yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i guess what? it's one more mana than wonder anyway but it's a it's a zombie so yeah pretty pretty hot yeah, yeah. I dig it. I want to see the flavor judge pictures. Just like, look, you could fly all along. This, this is the horde wings gob. Just like distributes all the fairy dust onto the zombies. Okay, <laughs> think happy thoughts. <laughs> and then the zombies are all flying, like fly over your blockers and your blockers are like, oh, it's raining small bits of things on me. This is unpleasant. Damn it, Cameron. I went Peter Pan and you had to make it totally disgusting. <laughs> Why are you so smart? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know, Nelson. It's something of a curse. 
There we go. <laughs> Next up is Shadowkin. Three and a blue for a 2-2 shapeshifter with flash. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player mills three cards. You may exile a creature card from among the cards milled this way. If you do, Shadowkin becomes a copy of that card, except it has this ability. So obviously you can flash that in at the end of someone's turn, and hopefully you at least get to do that once. But then that keeps, if they don't kill this, that keeps happening, right? Like every turn, mm. it's going to mill three cards. You don't have to change what creature it is every turn, but it's going to mill everyone for three cards every turn. Yeah, this is a neat one. I like that you can become their creatures, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Seems dangerous. I Yeah, I... I I quite like that. You're not going to get any ETB triggers from the creature it becomes, but I mean, yeah, that, all right, very cool. Crowded Crypt, that's, oh, that's a bad idea, is two and a black for an artifact. Taps to add black, so it's a little mana rock. Whenever a creature you control dies, put a corpse counter on Crowded Crypt. Everybody into the crypt. And then for four black, black, and tap and sacrifice Crowded Crypt, Create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with decayed for each corpse counter on Crowded Crypt. Yeah, sure. I mean, I like... Seems fine. Yeah. yeah. I like that at least it taps for mana while it's sitting around, not doing anything, waiting for someone to cast a wrath. Yeah. And now I'm just thinking of, like, the poor grave diggers who are like, oh, we have to fit another one in? Okay. And then just smash cut to, like, trying to, like, shoulder check another body into a crypt, and then another one falls out. I'm like, come on, man. I, yeah, I'm imagining the those videos of Tokyo Subway at rush hour. Oh yeah, with the <laughs> and, with the human pushers or whatever. Yeah, with the attendants trying to ram everybody in there, and it's just you've got some like some really bummed priest being like, "All right, okay, hang on, no, stop, no, you let people get out before you go in now." Okay, all right, now, all right, everyone, breathe in. <laughs> Gonna push. So just the sound of the sound of cracking. I didn't know there were there were subway marshals. Yeah, like many things about Japan, their like number and activity is sort of like overblown a little. But there are indeed people at like particularly busy stops in Tokyo that will help like ram people into the cars. Just playing like Tetris. I dig it. I dig it. It's a little. <laughs> it's a little more forceful than Tetris. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> next we have curse of the restless dead is two and a black for a curse enchant player whenever a land enters the battlefield under enchanted players control you create a two two zombie with decayed Ooh, <laughs> where's surge i need to curse him <laughs> the premier getting attacked for two player of the format <laughs> see this just i don't know the way that a lot of land centric decks work you're never going to get to swing with this, right? Because, like, all I'm thinking of are, like, the weird combos you get with people putting lands in that are, like, instant wins. Yeah, the other problem is if they're playing a ton of lands, they might have access to a Tabernacle of Pendril Veil, and then you have to pay mana for all these zombies in your upkeep before you attack. Oh, no. Still a solid card, like, for a regular commander game, for sure. Just, you know, especially yeah. if you have it early, it's, like, it's going to make 30 power <laughs> over the course of the game that, may or may not i mean you know it's like you get three two twos and then there's gonna be one player that can't block all of them this is a solid card or no i'm sorry it only get makes one two two per turn assuming they're making a land i was thinking this just makes a land each time or two two each time one of your opponents plays a land but it's just per player because it's a curse sorry yeah the that player it does it, it it does do it for every land they play but it's only the one player yeah so i mean still you're gonna get two two or three tokens a turn sometimes when they're on a cultivate or fetch lands. So mm -hmm. I still think it's decent. I have to give massive props to the name of this next card. It's ghouls night out. Yeah, this is, I want to say that this is an Austin joint. It sounds like something Austin would write. Yeah. It's uh three black, black for a sorcery for each player. Choose a creature card in that player's graveyard. Put those cards onto the battlefield under your control. They are black zombies in addition to their other colors and types, and they gain decayed. So for no additional mana value, it's rise from the grave for every player all at once. But they have decayed. But they have decayed. Still a pretty fun card. Yeah. Yeah. Like you get all of your all of everyone's best ETB creature that's in their graveyard. Yeah. Right. Also, great composition on the art. That's very cool. Yes. Gisa just won this set. Oh, yeah. Right. She looks yeah. like she's having a blast. Yeah. She's just the like she's the queen of Innistrad right now. It's awesome. Mm. So 
This next one's interesting, because I didn't know they had these on Innistrad. This is Gorex, the tomb shell. Previously, when we saw, you know, meandering tomb shells, they were on Tarkir. But I guess Innistrad also can have enormous turtle with with tomb on back as a treat. Only if they are zombie. Yeah. Well, as it turns out, tomb shells have the ability to inherently planes walk. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. They're just very slow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it, it started off with one, you know, mad wizard building a portal on the back of the first tomb sh- tomb shell, you know, as a way of like keeping it port mobile. And it just kind of went from there. As it turns out, it was a genetic modification that was passed on to that tomb shell's descendants. <laughs> I should mention, I said at the top that we haven't seen any of these cards. I've definitely seen Gorex because a lot of people sent it to us when it was spoiled. Six black black for a 4-4 zombie turtle. So that's eight mana. But as an additional cost to cast the spell, you can exile any number of creature cards from your graveyard. And the spell costs two less for each card exiled this way. And it has death touch because why not? And also, whenever Gorex the Tomb Shell attacks or dies, choose a card at random exiled with Gorex and put that card into its owner's hand. So it's not even that bad of a cost to exile creatures out of your graveyard because you kind of get them back, or at least you're going to get one back when Gorex dies. I'm like low key in love with this card and want to try it out in mono black aggro. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's sort of a tomb stalker. They have to be creatures, but. You also only have to have three of them, and then you get a two mana four four death touch. That's like good enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even in twenty twenty one, I think it's good enough. And then it yeah. draws you some cards. Like, ooh, exciting! Yeah, I I might have to go pick up this commander deck. I think that's very cool, actually. I'm, I'll be curious to see what what they make of it on North one hundred. Yeah, I, I mean, I doubt that I'll get it. Or well, this poor little zombie turtle will get a high rating from the cutthroat masters of the format over there. But I'm going to try it. Yeah, I don't know. Black, black for a four, four death touch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe Ben or Jer or Serge will think it's OK. I mean, is Gurmag Angler still good? I think so. Yeah, I think it's still playable. <laughs> yeah, All right. you're still allowed to Gurmag if you're in black mold or whatever. <laughs> you can you can angle the mangle. Yeah. Next is Prowling Geist Catcher. It's three and a black for a 2-4 human rogue. Whenever you sacrifice another creature, exile it. If that creature was a token, you put a plus one plus one counter on Prowling Geist Catcher. When Prowling Geist Catcher leaves the battlefield, return each card exiled with it to the battlefield under your control. Whoa. So, okay. So anytime you attack with a decayed creature and it gets through and you sacrifice it, then you just, this thing just gets bigger. You just get a plus one plus one counter on it. So that's that's cool. So it interacts with decayed things very well. That's neat. But also, if you're just in a deck that like sacrifices stuff, I'm not going to name any archetypes necessarily, <laughs> but you get to make this, you don't necessarily make this bigger if they're actual creatures, but it just means that when this dies, they, they come back. So wait, so hang on. If you have a bunch of non-token creatures, you sacrifice a bunch of them, you get all your death triggers, then you sacrifice the Geist Catcher, then they all come back. Yeah. Okay, well, now I need to know, does this go in Aristocrats? <laughs> I mean, it might. It might. It might. Because you get to, like, cycle your whole board twice. Yeah. Like, I was looking at this as maybe a mono-black replacement for something like uh, Shepherd or what was the other one? Luminous Broodmoth? Hmm. Yeah. Although Shepherd is also mono-black. God, what is its name from Theros? Yeah, I know the one you mean. Some kind of shepherd. Shepherd of the Lost? Nightmare Shepherd? Nightmare Shepherd. Yeah. But yeah, we've been seeing a lot of these recently, and this one seems interesting. It matters less in Highlander formats and Commander, but like, you know, just two of these and a free sack outlet and a blood artist is lethal, right? Oh, because you just sack them back and forth? Because they still die. It's a whenever you trigger. Yeah, it's like whenever. So it goes to the graveyard, then it gets exiled. Then you sacrifice the other one or no, you need three of them, I guess. But still, it's like, you know, or maybe the third one's allowed. The third thing can be a, a clone, perhaps it's like two of them have to leave. But, you know, it's just it can get pretty redundant because there's no mana involved in these triggers. So probably there's some bad combo deck you can put together in Legacy already that involves this card. I like it. That's wild. Yeah. Ravenous Rot Belly is four and a black for a four or five zombie horror. When it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice up to three zombies. When you sacrifice one or more zombies this way, each opponent sacrifices that many creatures. 
Nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's 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 flesh bag, but bigger. More flesh. Yeah. More bag. <laughs> yeah. More tongue for some reason. Oh. Yeah, exactly. This is like a flesh sack marauder. <laughs> <laughs> flesh crate marauder. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of larger receptacles than a bag. It's a whole flesh locker room. Yeah, it is. I dig it. That's good. Flesh oversized luggage marauder. <laughs> Again, you just want to be able to create lots of zombie tokens. I haven't, obviously I'm not looking at the full deck list because we're just looking at the, at the cards, but I assume that there's cards in the main deck that let you make lots of zombies. I mm-hmm. would assume. Uh, yeah. Dreadhorde invasion, endless ranks of the dead, open the graves, curse of the restless dead. Yeah, there's lots of stuff. To get full value off of this, you only need two other zombies, right? Because it's not other. There's no other on this. Right? You can even just, you know, if there's, if in a pinch, this is also a five mana flesh bag marauder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Although I do like the newer one from, I think, Ravnica that could hit planeswalkers. Yeah. And it also has a second toughness and makes them discard a card or something, right? Something like that. This one can get three creatures. So it's, it does have enough. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't recall the name, but yeah, it's a 3-2, and if they can't sacrifice a creature or Planeswalker, then they pitch a card. You know, it's it's not a zombie, though. Yeah, it's true. Last black card in this deck that's new is Tomb Tyrant. It's three and a black for a 3-3 three, three zombie noble, which is a type line I kind of dig, and it's a lord. Other zombies you control get plus one, plus one. That's great. <laughs> there's, there's other stuff, too. Two and a black, and tap and sacrifice a creature. Return a zombie card at random from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate this only during your turn, and if there are at least three zombies in your graveyard. Ah, okay. So you can't just be like, ah, this one zombie. Oops, it's randomly the one zombie. You have to have at least three. I kind of, that's that's kind of cute. But this seems awesome also. Yeah, I like that there's someone for Wilhelm to talk to that's like, you know, he's a legendary zombie warrior and this is a zombie noble. And like, you know, they're clearly an elevated upper crust of zombie society. Very crusty. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I like that a lot. The visions in these colors. We'll just talk about those real quick. The blue one, Visions of Duplicity, two and a black for a sorcery. Exchange control of two target creatures you don't control. And then it has the same flashback oh. cost. It's eight blue, blue, and cost reduced similarly. So, huh, that is that is interesting for a commander game. So you can really sort of be like, that's, that's I think, the most political card we've seen tonight. Because it, it really does not do not, nothing for you, right? Yeah. You can, I mean, you can maybe use it as like a cheeky removal spell right before you're about to kill someone is that how that works or did the sorry i always forget how these multiplayer rules work if i do a, a switch like this say i make you know cameron's grave titan is now controlled by graham and then i fly over and kill graham where, what happens to grave titan goes away yeah it just gets exiled or something right yeah 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 so i mean yeah player removal is the best kind of removal yeah, yeah. but otherwise yeah design is a political card yeah, I mean, it's going to feel bad to peel this when you're fighting, you know, when it's just you and one opponent left, but mm-hmm. them's the breaks. That's not why you're playing Commander. Yeah. Yeah. Visions of Dread is two and a black for a sorcery. Target opponent puts a creature card of their choice from their graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Flashback for eight black black with the same reduction. Interesting. Nope, don't like that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't love it, honestly. Yep. Unless you're really sure that they've only got one option. Yeah, it's going to be great in some corner case scenarios, like post-Wrath, and you have like a way to exile the rest of their, of their stuff, except for their Grave Titan or whatever. Yeah. And there's three other cards from the set boosters that I guess we'll just go through to make this an exhaustive First Impressions episode. Visions of Ruin is the red one, so it's three and a red for a sorcery. Each opponent sacrifices an artifact, for each artifact sacrificed this way, you create a treasure token. Sign me up. Yeah, right. Yeah, that'll 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 get playing commander. And it has the same the same flashback. There's a new curse. There's a curse of obsession. Four and a red for a curse. Enchant creature. At the beginning of enchanted player's draw step, that player draws two additional cards. At the beginning of enchanted player's end step, that player discards their hand. Are are you supposed to target yourself with this? Yeah. That's what I thought. Probably. Yeah. And then you just you just mono red storm every turn, <laughs> you know, or or you just wait until you have a ton of land. Yeah, I like it. And last one is Lind. Lind? Lind. 
L Y N D cheerful tormentor. So this is, this is some fun stuff here. One blue, black, red for a two, four human warlock with death touch. And whenever a curse is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return it to the battlefield attached to you at the beginning of the next end step. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may attach a curse attached to you to one of your opponents. If you do draw two cards. So a lot of curses do stuff in the upkeep. So it's going to hit you the one time, but then you get to draw two cards and throw the curse somewhere else. Yeah, unless you like load up a bunch of curses on one player, then that player dies. They all come back to you and you can only take one off per turn. Ooh, that is bad. So it's like if you're playing or you kind of need to like, you know, spread the curses around. But then if you survive and there's two players left now, like they're both going to have two curses or more, right? Yeah, but every turn you're firing a curse over their way. You know, she's going to make sure that you're the second to last player out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Best detail of this, by the way, is that she's got a little voodoo doll that she's poking a pin into. And the voodoo doll is an effigy of the the unluckiest planeswalker, the uh, so-called Brody Todd, as determined by the community. The guy mm. on all those curses. With the hipster undercut. Yeah. Yeah. Which is just a delightful detail that <laughs> she's she's the one tormenting this poor guy. That is pretty great. The art's fantastic, too. She's got oh, yeah. the most most wonderful expression on her face. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> Check this out. Oh, it's good. If you'd like to have a wonderful expression on your face after checking something out, head on over to cartoon.com forward slash LRR and uh, buy some stuff. They're going to ship it to you real quick. If you let them know we sent you and ask for a button, they'll send you one that no longer says lands in front. It now says literally anything else, and that's better. Great segue, by the way. Thank you. Does anyone remember what the, bu the button says right now? Yeah, that's hello. My name is Medium Gargadon. That's right. Hello, my name is Medium Gargadon. You know, we also want to thank everyone over at patreon.com forward slash loading ray run for helping us keep all of the lights and the funny jokes on and get this thing out the door mm -hmm. and that is going to do it for this episode of tap tap concede until next time i have been graham joined by nelson i'm here too and cameron hi everyone jordan edits these james runs the card reader heather gets them online and all of you hopefully listen and enjoy and we appreciate that so thank you all and we will talk to you next time bye 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 bye, bye.